Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jeffries, um, can you explain to me what the current commercial readiness is of zero emission locomotives? So I will say we've put battery electric out into revenue service with R&D with support of diesel locomotives, and we've been pleased with the returns on that, that R&D um, demonstration programs. Um, we've deployed and purchased battery electrics, um, waiting on those to be delivered. Some have gotten into yards, absolutely see promise there, but wide-scale production to replace thousands of locomotives is not a capability. So how long would it take if reasonably, uh, based on today's current commercial readiness, um, how long would it take to replace all diesel locomotives with electric? How many decades would you I guess? would venture multiple decades. If you could flip a switch and the capability was there, yes. Um, have you done a cost-benefit analysis knowing that your emissions from rail collectively are about 1.7% of all transportation-related emissions of greenhouse gases? Um, have you done a cost-benefit analysis for uh, comparing uh, rail to automobile to airlines in terms of uh, the benefit mm -hmm. compared to the cost of uh, doing these kinds of conversions to electric? Well, I, I, I opened the hearing by saying, and I think you hit the nail on the head, that 40% uh, of long distance freight, less than 2% of transportation emissions. You want to reduce emissions right now and move more goods by freight rail. Yeah, yeah. Um, regarding California's Air Resource Board's move towards a regulation that would ban freight rail industry from operating a large portion of their locomotives in California based on its age unless the locomotive is zero emissions. How would that regulation impact the functioning of the national rail network and short line railroads? Well, national rail network is the key. It's an interconnected national network that operates in interstate commerce not strictly within the bounds of one state, and that's why our regulations and our, our uh, uh, the rules in which we operate under are, are done at the federal level, and that states do not have jurisdiction to, to, to uh, determine the, the fate of our industry in interstate commerce. Um, and with that, um, you also need to have the capability of doing that, back to your first question, of the uh, of, of a conversion. If you're going to require a, a zero emissions locomotive right now, um, you've got to have the capability to produce that at scale. And that doesn't exist. We need to get there. I think we are all collectively working toward this goal. While it may not sound like it today, but um, um, again, we're proud of our environmental profile. We've got more work to do, and that's why we're committed to doing that work and making the related investments. Do we have enough uh, solar and wind uh, related electricity to handle an entire fleet of locomotives that are zero emission run on electricity? I certainly can't begin to answer that question. Um, I know that the additional uh, capacity required would be fairly dramatic, so. We, we've learned recently that uh, the greenhouse gases that are emitted just in order to manufacture uh, solar energy is three times more than the United Nations originally thought. Um, do you think that that should be factored in to um, the total emissions of greenhouse gases and the sources of them? Well, Senator, I, I can only focus on, on, on my industry and, and our efforts to reduce emissions, and I think you're, you're hitting at a broader question that is uh, for, for, for folks to debate who are, who are bigger experts than I by every stretch of the imagination. But certainly we need to be aware of, of the broader impacts of uh, policy decisions and not have on blinders. Mr. Rosen, um in your written testimony, you noted that over 75% of class one railroad fleet was a tier two locomotive or an earlier model. With those locomotives being ineligible to operate in California soon, 
Won't that result in a shift away from rail and to other modes? How would we get from the Long Beach port to unload goods, how would we get that to, to the border of California and Nevada without rail? Well, we won't. Um, what you'll see is that the locomotive manufacturers in this country will actually start generating locomotives again. Right now, they aren't being ordered. The facility my union represents in Erie, Pennsylvania, has a capacity without any expansion, uh, they've done this in past years, of 1,000 locomotives a year. We're probably a little over half of the total capacity in the country right now. It's a little hard to tell because everybody else is just flat on their back because the railroads have not been ordering new locomotives. They have not been ordering tier four locomotives, which is why the numbers are so low. And it, it's, it's an outrage. And that could be done. They could have been doing it all these past years, as we've been discussing here. And, uh, and if, you know, uh, when there's demand, you get supply. And the same will be true in terms of being able to move over to the, you know, if, to the extent that there's a holdup on battery locomotives because of batteries. Uh, I think, you know, you're seeing that in, rel in, in a number of industries. You're also seeing huge investments going on right now, uh, in part uh, through programs that uh, Congress uh, funded. And you're going to see a tremendous expansion of capacity for producing batteries over the next couple of years. Well, I don't, um, I'll, I'll tell you, being from Wyoming, I, I don't mind admitting that I'm getting a little resentful of California not wanting to look at industrial scale wind farms because it destroys their view shed, but they're perfectly willing to destroy the Wyoming view shed with as many. Uh, industrial scale wind farms as we can get transmission lines from Wyoming to California. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting that the people who demand uh, wind and solar energy do not want the industrial scale energy produced in their state. They want it produced in my state. And, and I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm a little sick of it, but that's it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, Senator. Um, so uh, one argument against strengthening rail standards is that it will push more goods 